travel with us now to one of the most beautiful places in the world, the fabulous Thousand Islands, bordering northern New York and Canada, and the birthplace of Thousand Island Dresser. Or was it? We are about to examine the evidence to determine the mysterious origin of Thousand Island Dressing. Thousand Island Dressing is one of the most popular condiments in the world, and the legends of how this famous salad dressing was created at the turn of the 20th century are cloaked in intrigue. Tales of tragic love, fame and riches, working class ingenuity, shocking racism and smoldering sensuality make this a tasty mystery to devour. Please join us now as we uncover the clues and seek to solve the mysterious origin of Thousand Island Dressing. It's time to go back and examine the clues, evidence, and legends that surround the famous salad dressing's first appearance at the turn of the 20th century. Most believe that Thousand Island Dressing was named for the region where it was created, the Thousand Islands, a breathtaking region of international beauty so named because of the more than thousand islands that dot the shared pristine waterway of the St. Lawrence River between New York State and Ontario, Canada. But there is one legend that says the dressing was actually created in Chicago. In fact, for this one dressing, there are three legends. We're going to take a look at them all and the fascinating folklore that surrounds them. And in doing so, we may actually solve the mysterious origin of Thousand Island Dressing. Legend number one, George Bolt and Chef Oscar. Oscar Chersky, the ship steward of the rich and famous George Bolt, created the unique sauce for the lunch guests aboard Bolt's yacht, Louise, while cruising the Thousand Islands. This same steward then rose to fame as the prominent chef Oscar of the Waldorf in New York City, which happened to be Bolt's hotel. Oscar, it is said, then went on to create other famous dishes such as the Waldorf salad, veal Oscar, and eggs Benedict. Alan Bennis, who owns the Thousand Island Inn in Clayton, New York, and claims the dressing was first served there in the early 1900s, has a different view. Oscar did not create it, and it wasn't on George Bolt's boat. In fact, research on George Bolt indicates from a fellow who has dedicated his life to the research that Oscar Shirky was never in the Thousand Islands and in his entire life. He was scared to death of the water and hated boats. George Bolt built the amazing Bolt Castle in the Thousand Islands for his wife Louise. Reshaping the island it is constructed on into a heart and renaming it Heart Island to symbolize his love for her. If you were to visit Bolt Castle, you'll see in the stonework, the raw ironwork, the plasterwork, hearts are a theme throughout the entire structure. This love story ended tragically as Louise's own heart gave out before she could see the finished masterpiece in her honor. Today it stands as a testament to one man's love. And in the gift shop, bottles of legendary Thousand Island dressing are sold with the story of Oscar and the yacht printed on the label. The Mysterious Origin of Thousand Island Dressing Legend number two, Sophia Lalonde. In the early part of the 20th century, small inns with restaurants specializing in regional recipes were abundant in the Thousand Islands. Many offered dinners created from the bountiful catches of the St. Lawrence River and topped with unique sauces and condiments. One such inn was the Herald House. George Lalonde guided guests from the hotel to fish for black bass and northern pike through the scenic fish-filled waters of the Thousand Islands that would serve as their delicious shore dinners. His wife, Sophia, created a different and unusual salad dressing that received such rave reviews from the fishing parties that it was requested to be served in the Herald House's dining room by May Irwin, a prominent Broadway actress and star of the time, who published her own cookbook and had her own cooking column. Grandma Sophia used to take in May Irwin's laundry from her place on Grindstone Island, and she did all of her sheets and pillowcases. Uh, Grandpa Lalone took May Irwin fishing all the time and was her guide. So I, I, I believe that that's the connection uh, where the recipe got into May Irwin's hands and, uh, and allegedly given to uh, Chef Oscar or uh, the maitre d' Oscar of the Waldorf Astoria. So who was May Irwin? 
She was notorious for the first ever cinematic smooch with actor John Rice in the 1896 Thomas Edison film, The Kiss. The film only lasted a few seconds, but it was considered scandalous at the time and publicly denounced by clergy. She was known for her ample bosom and flirty behavior. But perhaps by today's standards, most shocking is that part of Irwin's popularity was gained through the singing recording of coon songs, a form of entertainment that is difficult to listen to today, but very popular at the turn of the century. Have you heard about that bully that jumped on the town? He's down among the nuts, laying the body down. I'm a looking for that bully and he must have found. She bought an island in the Thousand Islands and traveled by rail from her home in New York City. So was it May Irwin that gave George Bolt the recipe for Thousand Island dressing? The mysterious origin of Thousand Island dressing. Legend number three, Chef Theo Rooms, Chicago. The Theo Rooms story is featured and archived at the Chicago Culinary Museum which has a program from the awards ceremony held in September 1925 at the Hotel Sherman's Grand Ballroom, where Chef Rooms was recognized for his contribution to American cuisine for creating Thousand Island dressing in 1910. Here is the account by Theo Rooms that is featured in that program. It was 15 years ago that the Blackstone Hotel opened its doors to the public. I was then a chef at the Blackstone and my contribution consisted of a new salad dressing. It found immediate favor with the hotel patrons and was in big demand. In honor of the hotel, it was called Blackstone Salad Dressing. Chefs and stewards of the other hotels heard of the dressing and inquiries came in from all directions. At this particular time, I went on a vacation on the St. Lawrence River, visiting the Thousand Islands. Coming home, I discussed with the maitre d' of the hotel, Mr. Owater, the success of the dressing and in the course of my conversation, my visit to the Thousand Islands was mentioned. A sudden thought struck Mr. O'Water, and he exclaimed excitedly, the Thousand Island dressing was a good name for my new salad dressing. There was a Chicago contingency of uh, island residents here during that era, late 1880s, uh, early 1900s. Uh, George Pullman, among the probably most notable from the Chicago area. Um, so he certainly uh, could have first been introduced to the Thousand Islands dressing here in the Thousand Islands where it originated, and then um, thought uh, an adaptation to uh, the same recipe in this uh, Chicago uh, hotel would um, be a hit. <laughs> so which legend is correct? Our research tells us that none of them contain the complete story. So sit back and relax as we separate fact from fiction, and let's unravel together the mysterious origin of Thousand Island Dressing. <laughs>